Hello! Welcome to my tutorial on writing your first effects plugin for Resolume 7. I wanted to make this video because I have been trying to write custom effects in Resolume for years, but this is the first time I felt like I really understood the process. There's always been a steep learning curve for this stuff, so hopefully this will get you past some of the usual pain points. To get the most out of this tutorial, you'll want some familiarity with OpenGL and C++. You don't need to be an expert, but you'll want to have some basic familiarity with concepts like vertex shaders, fragment shaders, and texture mapping. If you're looking for online resources, I recommend the Book of Shaders. However, if you really want a good foundation, I highly recommend this book, Computer Graphics Programming and OpenGL with C++. This helped me with basically everything I do with computer graphics, even if I'm not directly using either OpenGL or C++. Right now we're looking at the Resolume fork of the FFGL repository. First you'll want to check out the repo and open up the included project files. So go ahead and clone the repo, and once it's cloned, navigate to the Windows Build folder and open up the FFGL plugins solution file. I'm using a newer version of Visual Studio, so I get prompted to migrate the project file, which is fine and straightforward. Once it's imported, you can see the folders here are for different types of plugins that you can create. Sources are also known as generators. They take no texture input and create an output just from the code that you write. Effects have one input texture, and mixers have two or more input textures. I'm going to focus on effects since that should give you an idea of how to use textures and variables controlled by Resolume. Next I want to export one of the example plugins just to make sure that we can do this process from start to finish. Let's take the effect add subtract and go ahead and build it by right clicking the project file and clicking build. Once it's finished you'll see that the file add subtract.dll is exported and we're going to hop over to Resolume and make sure we can find that DLL. Once you come over into Resolume, we'll search effects for the name of our plugin. If you don't see it at first, you're going to want to go to Preferences and check your plugin settings. So under Video, you will find the directories where we look for FFGL plugins. Just click Plus and then navigate to the directory where we outputted from Visual Studio. Once that's loaded, Resolume will immediately load in the DLLs from that folder. So we can find our plugin right here. So go ahead and drag that to a new track. We're gonna play around with this a little bit. You'll see that there's an RGB slider. So this lets us set a precise color. And if you come back to Visual Studio, we can look at how that's actually done. And you can look in the fragment shader and you'll see the color math that they're doing in this example. And then this function add RGB color param that's how we specify what kind of parameter we want to use. This is kind of a specialized parameter, and the more common kind of parameter is a float. A float is just a number from 0 to 1. So I'll go over how to add floats as parameters to your effects later on. Next, what I want to do is create my own project file for the effect that I'm creating. And this is just following some instructions from the wiki page for the FFGL repo. This is a bit manual, so I wrote a script to take care of it, but I'm just going to go over the steps right here so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to make a, an effect called Vignette. So I'm going to come in here and make a few edits. The first thing you want to do is search for GUID and remove the project GUID line. Then anywhere that it references the files, add, subtract, the, the header file and the C++ file, we're going to rename that to Vignette. And once you've done that, go ahead and save the file as vignette.project file. Okay, next if you navigate over to the source directory, there's two files that we're going to want to change here. Those are, uh, well yeah, copy the add subtract folder and we'll rename that vignette. And then inside we will rename both of these files to vignette. Once that's done, come into your solution and if you right click it and go to add and then add an existing project, from there you navigate to your, the project file that you just created. And 
Okay, should show up in this right panel. Go ahead and look through that and find your vignette files. Okay, and there's one more step we need to do in these files. We need to change every instance of add subtract to vignette. So go ahead and use a find and replace to change that in both the C++ and the header file. Okay, then in the C++ file, we can uh, change the unique ID and give your plugin a description. Okay, I just wanted to go over how I write my shader code. You'll notice I'm using VS Code for this because there's a couple plugins related to GLSL that will help you avoid writing errors and writing shaders that don't compile. The two plugins that really help me out are the GLSL Linter and GLSL Snippets. GLSL Linter has, uh, yeah, it takes a little setup because you have to you have to download another program, the validator, and then you have to go into your settings and set the validator path and stuff. But yeah, once you've got that set up, it's really nice. It'll, it'll show you when you actually have compile errors. So for example, if we do something like that, it's mad that there's no semicolon and this error will tell you what the problem is. Uh, same thing if we use a function like texture and we don't give it enough inputs, we're gonna get an error and it's just really nice to know that before you try to build your code and plug it into Resolume and whatnot. Yeah, the other plugin I've got is GLSL Snippets. That one is really nice because if you forget what the signature is of a function, like say you're trying to use mix, you know what it is. This will just pop up the definition and it's super helpful. There's so many shader functions that it's really annoying to look them up. So that will help you out. Okay, next I want to just go over what's important in this shader and what we get from FFGL and Resolume. So first there's the input texture. This is pretty straightforward. And the other variable that we get is UV, which is the coordinates of the texture. So basically UV, uh, it's gonna be, it's a VEC2 and that's gonna be two floats. So the X coordinate is zero to one and then the Y coordinate is zero to one. And you can use this texture function to figure out what the original color is. So yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with the input texture. You're not limited to just the pixel that is at UV. You can look at other stuff on input texture. Yeah, that's the important stuff. And then you've got the out vector, which is frag color. It's a VEC4, so make sure you've got the colors listed, the RGB colors and the alpha channel. Okay, and this particular shader is just the simplest thing I could think of and throw together. It's a vignette, so basically it's looking at the edges and if something is close enough to the edges or far enough from the center, really, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the color black with it. And we're using this uh, float called strength and the strength is gonna be the parameter that we get from Resolume. And that is going to let us control uh, basically where, I call this the horizon line, but it's where we actually wanna start the vignette. Okay, so this code looks good. So I'm gonna take this code and plug it into uh, Visual Studio. Let's take this code and replace the fragment shader code in our C++ file. Now we need to set up the parameter that we created, which is called strength. Let's remove this RGB parameter and add a float param. So type add param ffglqs param create and then the string strength. Basically the add param function is going to take care of the work you'd usually have to do in C++ with layout and binding to get your shaders and your C++ code working together. If you look under the hood, the send params function is the one that does the work for you, which follows from the add params that we wrote. Save your work and then build the project. The first build will take a long time, but the second build goes pretty fast. Over in Resolume, pull in your effect and play with the params. Great, everything's working. One of the nice things about Resolume 7 is you can make your changes to your plugins without having to close and restart Resolume. 
To do that, just make sure you clear out any instances of your plugin like this. Then you can make changes over in Visual Studio. Here I'm changing some numbers in the shader to make the effect a little stronger and just verifying that it works. Okay, and you can see the effect is a bit stronger than last time. Just to show you what happens if you forget to clear out all the instances, if you try to build in Visual Studio, you'll just get this DLL is busy sort of error. It's a pretty common one. It's really easy to forget. Not a big deal. Just go back to your layers and clear out any instances of the effect. Lastly, I wanted to cover how to use the debugger. Another really common error is writing a shader that doesn't compile. To test this out, we'll just remove a semicolon from the shader. Visual Studio, make sure the build target is debug instead of release. When you come into Resolume, you'll see that your effect appears to work, but when you change the parameters, nothing happens and you get frustrated. The way that you see the error messages is you go to the debug menu in Visual Studio and click attach to process and then find your Resolume process and click Attach. In the output window, you see some messages about vignette.dll. Let's pull the effect back in. Okay, we'll end it there. I hope you found that helpful. And I left some helpful links in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Again, good luck and have fun out there.